Haven't done a video in a week or so, maybe two. Oh, uh, I hate these things. But uh, got my cylinders in, so we'll check them, and then uh, start pulling apart the Norton. And if the pistons are still good, I'll just order rings and bore this out second over. That's the plans. Save a little bit of money. There's supposed to be no broken fins. It's supposed to be a stock bore. It's supposed to come with two standard pistons. But uh, probably going to bore it out. glasses on here. Here's some water. These don't look like the uh, pistons that I have. Oh, maybe. Hepalite. Hepalite has that AE in there. I thought mine were domed or something. I don't know. This piston's look in pretty good shape for standard pistons. This one's stamped standard. The stamping's different on them. This one looks newer. Huh. Look at all of them. I wish we shoved that all in there so I wouldn't break any fins. All the fins look good. That's my worry. Looks in really good shape. Got that for 160 bucks on eBay plus shipping, so 40 bucks shipping. Oh, these are liners. That's why it's better. Yeah, these have been lined. Let's see if I can show you that. I don't know if you can see here, but you can see the liner in it where it's been machined out. The guy didn't say that in the listing. Or this one's a liner. No, I think they both are. Yeah, mine, mine's all one piece. Yeah, that's a liner in that one. Huh. Well, 
see if I can bore that out. I gotta look at the pictures because I, I thought mine looked different than, than this. I thought this looked fatter here where this one doesn't look like it. Okay, <laughs> been a while here since I did a video, even one just before this. Um, got this cylinder, and you can see it's been re-sleeved. When I bought it online, um, the guy didn't show any pictures of the bottom of the cylinder, and I was leery of that. But he said a standard bore, standard pistons. I, I never thought that the guy would have resleeved it, but <clears throat> it's resleeved. It looks like it's going to be okay. And uh, I just check in the piston ring end gap. One thing about this video here is that I didn't get to show you any of this from um, when I the, I tore the bike down three years ago, and uh, uh, I didn't do any videos back then. So we're going to pull the top end off this bike. I'm going to do a video on that and check it out. Probably going to have this board, but I'll go through it with you. So we're going to check the ring end gap. The top ring, uh, the compression ring, it is chrome. <clears throat> and uh, you want to check it in three spots. I'm doing the right hand side first. And I took the rings off the piston, right hand piston. And I, I use that to get the, the ring perfectly centered. Uh, in the cylinder. So push it down about a uh, half inch, three quarters of an inch where the highest wear is and then the middle and then the bottom. Those are your three high wear points. But uh, um, I don't even need to get that far because this top ring, <clears throat> the ring end gap is supposed to be, you measure the gap right in here and uh, I'm not even looking at the thing there. This is where you, you measure the ring end gap right in between here in the cylinder wall. And I don't know, maybe I can get a better look here. <coughs> Aim you down in here. If you can see it right there, the ring end gap. It's supposed to be, the top ring's supposed to be, uh, the, this manual says 10 to 12 thou, but 8 to 12 thou. There's a 15 thou. Gauge there. I actually stuck a 22 in there. There's a 25. Let's see if that even fits. Yeah, I can. I can just stick a 25 thou in there. That's snug. So it's probably about 24 thou gap. So that <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> and then your second ring gets it's less wear. It's supposed to be uh, uh, 10 to 12 thou gap. Put that down about three quarters of an inch. And on this one, it's it's a lot better. I'm getting about 15 thou on this one. There you see, it's a lot smaller gap there. I can't get a 16 thou in there. 16 thou is pushing it down, but I can, I can just squeeze a 15 thou in there. But either way, they're both out of specs. So <clears throat> then I was wondering, well, maybe I can order a new set of rings. Maybe the rings are worn down. And uh, I don't have an internal bore gauge. I have all the mics, but I, I don't have an internal bore gauge anymore. So here's a simple way how you can check. <clears throat> if you got some of these long feeler gauges, I've got a few left, not very many. I'd like to get more, but they, these things are pricey, like 15 bucks each. So this is a 3,000 one. And the piston to uh, cylinder wall clearance is, is the limit is 5,000. So I, I lay the the 3 thou feeler gauge in the cylinder, put the piston in, and it slides through from top to bottom like nothing. So that's not good. And where'd my other feeler gauge go? Oh, here's one here. This is 6 thou feeler gauge. Remember the tolerance is 5 thou, so I'm gonna lay the 6 thou gauge in there 
feed the piston in from the bottom because your your the top of your piston is the smallest diameter. It gets larger at the bottom. The largest part of your piston is right at the bottom of the skirt down here. So we're gonna feed that into there, and uh, I can still push that piston right through. It's snug. It's snug. That's with a six thou feeler gauge in there, so there's probably six and a half to seven thou. I, a seven thou, I think, would be really tight. So we're gonna have to bore this out. We're gonna have to bore this cylinder out, and I noticed this piston too has a little chip out of it, so it's no good. So I'll probably sandblast this up, and. Uh, I'd like to go first over piston. There's, there's no, there's no scoring or uh, deep grooves or marks in these cylinders at all. They're in good shape, so I'd like to go first over. But a lot of the companies that sell the uh, the pistons like to go uh, twenty thou, forty thou, sixty thou, eighty thou, ten thou over isn't too common. And uh, when it's not common, they charge a lot more money. <laughs> Okay, so that's where I'm at with this cylinder. So the next thing is to uh, to get this one out. So I'm gonna pull this apart tonight. We'll get this disassembled. And uh, I could use these two pistons in here. They're second over already, and then I just gotta order the rings. I'm, I'm gonna look at that option when I get it all apart. Okay, let me start tearing it down here. Okay. First thing is the seat. <laughs> I didn't have any inline fuel filters in, and I think I, in this tank I never flushed it when I bought it, so I think I got a little dirt going through those carbs. I think that's why I got a little popping, a little missing, and uh, they were getting dirty. It was because of that. Oh, I think I loosened these two nuts up here. So there's a bunch of things on here I want to fix. One thing is the uh, the stops on the triple tree are just touching the tank right in here. So I'm going to build them up a little bit or make a little plate for it. I didn't realize they're worn down that much. They didn't look like it, but I guess they are. And the other thing is, <clears throat> my floor is level, and I can put a level on this red lift, it's level, and then I put a level across the, the frame of the bike here. Look at that, the seat's rubbing already. Um, and, and the bike's not level, so the center stand, I've got to build it up on the right hand side, about a quarter of an inch. That's how much it's out. So we're going to make a little plate for that. So there's lots of room for improvements here. Luckily we've had some really warm weather this past week, like in the 90s, which is unbelievable. Okay, let me jack this up. First thing we do is remove the carbs again. <laughs> the carbs, the uh, top ice elastic, 
Uh, probably going to take the coils off, get them out of the way. Oil lines to get out everything. Well, this will be for the people that didn't get to see how the top end comes off. I'll get back to you when I get a few more things off. Okay, got the carbs off. Got the coil assembly off. Took the carbs right off so they're out of the way. Just gonna undo the uh, ice elastic top one. Take the whole plate off the top here. Oh, that's a Redo it all over again. Really hard to get myself motivated to take this thing down again. <laughs> but I, I know it pretty well off by heart now, so it should be a lot easier. All the parts are clean. A lot of the parts are new. Like the head, the head is all new. Valves, guides, seals. So I don't have to touch anything in there, but I can check it all out when I got it off again. Yep, got to do it again. Just didn't have the money last winter to to uh, bore this out. Well, you couldn't bore it out any higher anyways. It was, you'll see when I get it off, it's so thin on the one side. It's real thick on the one side of the cylinder wall and then real thin on the other. So I didn't want to bore it anymore. Maybe could have got away with 10 thou more. And there's a broken fin right here. Yeah, just I guess it's just that one, one fin's broken there when I got the bike. Oh uh, well. And uh, when I get this apart, oh, I gotta take the exhaust off too. When I get this apart, I gotta order the parts, and I'm gonna order them all from uh, I think Norville. They seem to have the best rates, and. Uh, um, that's going to take 10 days probably. Okay, let me um, get the oil lines off and the headers off. Got this oil filter strap here. 
see if it'll undo this nut. I didn't put a wrench or anything on these nuts. I just tightened up as best I could. And uh, that side was not too tight. This side's a little tighter. That works. Won't hold for long distances. Okay, got the oil lines off, headers off, I think it's ready to come off. Start undoing all the uh, head bolts. I'll get that going. Okay, there's two bolts here on this side, <clears throat> two on the opposite side, two in the front, and then there's that one big nut at the back here. I took the air breather out, gives you a lot more room for working to get this nut out the back here. Now when I was running this bike <laughs> and it was uh, pumping oil, like it was, my compression went up because it had oil getting into the cylinders and I noticed it was dripping around the head gasket a little bit too. I, I didn't retorque the heads because I only ran the bike for a few minutes and uh, knew I was going to take it apart. but. When I was loosening off all these bolts just now, they were all just about loose. I could turn them, turn them like nothing. So anybody that rebuilds one of these bikes, <laughs> I'd be retorquing it even before you started it. And then uh, torque it again right after it starts because holy smoke, I cannot believe how loose they are. I had them all torqued right to specs and they weren't much tighter than uh, hand tight. Unbelievable. But I also use that uh, the fiber head gasket and not the copper. The copper uh, certainly wouldn't have compressed as much as that fiber one. Come on. Not sure if I got it all the way or not. two on the inside from the bottom here <laughs> there's so many hidden hidden bolts on this thing one there and uh, one on the other side turn that radio down the nuts you gotta put in first so you can't get them out so I'm gonna order a new head gasket new base gasket new rings for sure and uh, maybe new pistons but I might be able to use these second over pistons we'll see Uh, I'll get back to you in a minute when I'm almost there. Okay, I think I got them all out. Two and two here, two here, one here, two big nuts on the bottom. I think that's it. Get my mallet. Ugh. There's one more. <laughs> oh no, I got that one out, so don't think there's any in there.
one more right there. I don't know why they got three in a row there, but they got three. taking this bike apart I didn't couldn't find all the, the nuts and bolts to take apart so I took the whole thing off as one piece now yeah, let me get that out push rod's going to be. I gotta pull the cylinder off with it. <laughs> okay. I guess you gotta push the uh, um, get the push rods out of the uh, followers to get enough slack to get them off. All right, gasket's all broke. This one kept leaking on me too. I don't know why. Kept leaking. Okay. So now. three hands. I got it right at the edge. Just a little bit more.
here. Try these ones. I guess you're supposed to push the push rods up to get enough clearance to get them out. But I'm having difficulty with that. And they're slippery as hell. Let me fuck with it. Okay, here's the trick. <laughs> Piss me off. Figured it out. I blocked up the cylinder head with a two by three and another one inch piece. And then I'm able, you gotta grab all four push rods at the same time, push them up, then you can tilt the head out like this and uh, get the push rods out. Um, that's the only way I could see to do it. But you got to hold off, they're, and they're slippery, and they're oily, and it's, uh, that's how you do it right there. That was tricky. Might be a little easier going in, because then the push rods can sit down in there. But, uh, man, that was ridiculous. Okay, I got that off. There's the other push rod. Right there, right there, right there. So yeah, you gotta grab all four push rods. I pinched them together, then lifted, pushed them up as high as I can, then tilted the engine. But I had to, I couldn't, you need three hands. So I blocked up the, uh, the cylinder head. And uh, yeah, with these type of gaskets, man, you got to retorque those heads uh, pretty quickly. I, I couldn't believe how much they loosened off. You know, they loosened right off. This was the side that was smoking more, but I'm sure it's those rings. Those rings weren't. Tried to make them work. Yeah, it's nice and smooth and everything, but no, I gotta be reboard. Okay. I'll just take the cylinders off, undo all these bolts, and that'll be it. The cylinder bolts were sure a lot uh, tighter. They didn't loosen up like the head bolts did. But was it ever hard to break that gasket on the bottom there? I don't know what glue I used. I think it was that red Loctite glue gasket maker and wow were they ever hard to, uh, to break loose but at the back of the the back of the cylinder overlaps the cases so I put a block of wood in here and you got a it's a nice place to pry on the bottom of the cylinder and all of these nuts when you put the cylinders on, you've got to uh, slowly pull the cylinders up, get all the nuts started, and slowly lower the, the uh, nuts down all at the same time. They don't make it easy, these Brits.
just put light pressure on that just to lift the cylinder up. I was reading on the internet there about these rings, the Hastings rings and the Hepalite rings. And a lot of guys had problems where that uh, the Hastings ring, the oil control ring, was too big. The uh, spacer ring was too big. So people were cutting them down, cutting like an eighth of an inch out of them. <laughs> so they would fit in there. And that's a problem I had. I, I couldn't get those Hastings rings in, in there on the Hepalite piston. I couldn't get the oil ring in there. So I ended up going with uh, the spacer from the, the uh, Hepalite. And uh, I thought that would work, but it didn't work. It didn't push the uh, oil rings, the uh, oil rings out far enough to collect the oil, so it was pumping oil. Yeah, the cylinder, the cylinder walls are worn, but I thought they would have been all right. <clears throat> There is less piston to cylinder clearance on these ones than those new ones I just bought. So, uh, let me crank that up. So, but you know what, these, these pistons, they might work. I'm gonna double check them again. With some new rings and a fresh bore. Very nice to do it right the first time. Okay. All comes down to money. These bikes cost a lot of money. A lot of money to keep them going. Okay. I think that's it for today. Um, I think I'm probably going to use these pistons. They, they look pretty good. I'm going to measure them again. And I'll order a set of stock Hepalite rings. And I'll have the new cylinders bored out to this. And, uh, but I won't do that until I get the rings in. I like to give them the piston rings and the pistons at the machine shop and uh, get it all bored out at one shot. And then I'll order the top end gasket kit at the same time. But that's it for today. That's the teardown. I can see what's going on with these cylinders here, why this guy sold these cylinders, or what the issue was with them. He had sleeves put in, but the sleeves were too long. You can see the sleeves on this stock one are flush with the uh, tappet holders. And you look at this one, and this side's flush. And the only reason why it's flush is because it's been hammering into the... the uh, crankshaft webs and it's beat it down because I was wondering why is this all kind of beat down looks like the guy took a hammer to it and then this side's nice and sharp and this is because it's hitting the uh, flywheel webs in here and it's beat it down it's displaced the uh, the um, cylinders a little bit but I, I'm hoping a clean bore well I'm gonna have a machinist look at it and make sure a clean bore will clean that up and then what will have to happen is uh, this will have to be machined down level with the tappets uh, these are protruding out too far into the uh, cylinders. Like there's quite a difference there. So that's what happened with this one. This must have made a hell of a noise in his engine or barely turned over or, or what, you know, like the webs are going to be hitting right on that. Like I don't even know how that even ran. But anyways, we'll see if we can uh, fix that up, machine this down, rebevel it and have it bored out. I'm going to take it to a machine shop tomorrow and see uh, see what they think. 
I'll bring both of them so they can see. Okay.